Traditionally, it's not been a happy hunting ground for Barnet, and the 26th of August proved no different. The game also marred by the sending off of Captain Eddie Steen. victory of the season at Underhill, however, was a completely different story. The Bees starting with an emphatic 4-0 victory over Cheltenham Town.
unfortunately no film of this one, but with Barnett's second home fixture they went one better, dispatching Chorley five goals to nil. Next came the relatively short trip south to Sutton, where a magnificent display of attacking football from Dave Regis and Andy Clark spurred Barnett onto a 3-1 win. Then to newly promoted Merthyr. Unfortunately, again, there's no film of this, but it would have shown that Merthyr's second goal was decidedly handball, and the first one could well have been offside. The less the said about it other than that, the better. After Barnett's impressive start to the season at Underhill, the arrival of Boston United, without an away win to their credit, should have posed few problems. But the Bees, without suspended captain Eddie Steen, struggled and eventually lost 2-1. of the FA Cup began at Bishop's Dortford, where Barnett came through with a second half goal from Gary Ball in what was a particularly ill-tempered game. Next came the short trip to Docklands, Barnett winning 2-1 at Fisher Athletic with goals from Frank Murphy. Fisher, a team full of endeavour, but lacking any real flair or finesse, much the same as their ground and their supporters. Runcorn were the next visitors to Underhill. Barnett did well to fight back from an early setback and led 2-1 up until the closing minutes, but had to be satisfied with a point.
They looked a competent outfit and deserved the draw that they got. <laughs> Just over the bar there, from number eight for Wellingfield Hanford. Good through ball looking for Trevor Booker and finding him. And a good shot through Peter Guthrie's legs, 1 0 to Welling. well collected by Paul Bannon. Paul Wilson doing well with not much support. Very well intercepted again by Paul Bannon. Dominic Payne finding Jeff Cooper out on the left. A good cross for Regis, just unable to get above the ball. And Dave Regis on side, unable to turn. Gets the ball back in, Phil Griddelick. And blasts the ball over the top. Oh, Griddelick heads on and it's dropped for Regis, but well saved there again. Paul Barron. <laughs> being forced into an error which lets in Trevor Booker again but he slices the ball just wide <laughs> and a penalty 
bit like Terry Reynolds forced the handle after an error at the back by Duncan Horton. And a great save by Paul Barron from Gary Ball. And Andy Clark nearly getting George Riley away. John Glover almost making contact, and in the end, Peter Guthrie doing well to collect that ball. And it appears that Booker's on side. And Guthrie doing, performing miracles at the back there to keep that one out. George Riley with a header from the back. Just what the doctor ordered for Barnet. proved an inspired substitution by Barry Fry. <laughs> Barron, I think, a little disappointed he didn't manage to keep that ball out. And nicely flicked on by Regis to Clark. And Andy Clark on the run. Still in possession. Uh, a little unfortunate with that ball, but it finds Steen. Just glass well over the bar. The second qualifying round of the FA Cup brought Newmarket Town to Underhill. Visitors fought bravely right to the bitter end, but Barnet always had the edge and ran out 4 2 victors. Victor Cooper, sustained bursting down the left, found by Cooper. He beats Tim Glebe. Can't get in a telling cross. Payne doing very well, winning the ball in the area. And just over the bar. And down the middle for Murphy. Finds Gary Ball. And well collected by John Black. Pull out to Cooper. Laid off by Murphy to Clark, back to Murphy, just past the post. Steen gets Cooper away on the left. One nil. Very well put away by Frank Murphy, and the cross by Cooper. Guthrie into trouble. Guthrie not quite sure what he was going to do with that, I don't think, and concedes a free kick. And very unlucky by Pearson, just past the post. And it's Cuffy. And he's done ever so well, one all. Staying on the overlap. Good cross from Steen. And Gary Ball puts it over when perhaps he should have done better. So. And Payne doing very well, setting Cooper free. First time cross in. Gary Ball unable to finish. Breaks to Payne. A great shot from Derek Payne and a very good stop by Black in the Newmarket goal. Steam with a free kick. George Riley immediately making an impression up in that penalty area. Shot by Derek Payne just wide. Murphy to Cooper. Clark free on the left. The ball to Clark and a great goal by Andy Clark.
And Cooper picking that ball up well. Beats his man in a good cross. Oh, Derek Payne just a little bit too slow in front of goal. Inside to Cooper. And Cooper gets it across looking for ball. Oh, free header. Unable to capitalise on the time he had. Cooper looking for Riley, finding him. The referee's blown for a free kick. Messi looking for Rogers. Riley does very well. Sets Murphy free on the right. Oh, and a blaster from Jeff Cooper. Canning it off Tim Grave at the back. Cross almost finding Andy Clark at the far post. <laughs> and a mistake by Gridlet. Let's Massey free. And the equaliser and Cuffey. Certainly totally against the run of play, Newmarket find themselves level again. It's George Riley to Mamet. Andy Clark. Corner to Barnett. Nice ball into Derek Payne. And well saved by the keeper. To Clark. Clark more running into Pearson than anything else then. He gets that ball back, does very well. To Payne. Great turn. And a superb goal by Barnett. Walked into the net by Murphy. And a brilliant turn by Payne in the box, uh, leading to that goal for Barnett. And a nice ball from Ball to Clark. Opens the play up, taking it over to Jeff Cooper with Steen on the overlap. It's a beautiful cross to Gary Ball and 4 2 to Barnett. And the referee blows the final whistle. Barnett 4, Newmarket 2. And Newmarket rank outsiders, certainly by no means disgraced. A good, gutsy performance. Unfortunately, we've got no film of Barnett's first ever visit to Cherrywood Road, Farnborough, but a rasping drive from Phil Stacey separated the teams. Everybody stopped and watched as Ian Crawley opened the scoring for Telford, but Barnett fought back bravely, and with goals from Gary Bull and Frank Murphy, ended up 2-1 victors.
Again, unfortunately, we've no film of this one. Barnett avenging their home defeat by Boston with goals from Phil Stacey and a spectacular effort from Andrew Clark. Back on cup duty with an awkward trip to Cambridge City. The home side fought hard, but Barnett's experience and tenacity saw them through. Next come a midweek away trip to Yeovil. Unfortunately, we haven't got film, but I understand a spectacular goal from Jeff Cooper was the highlight of the evening. Next, the Silkman from Macclesfield came to Underhill. Adverse weather conditions made good football hard to come by, and neither side was able to break the deadlock. entry to the Hearts Senior Cup saw the arrival of Hitchin Town to Underhill. In a game that Barnet should have sewn up easily, Hitchin very nearly stole a draw, but spectacular goals from Bull and Murphy won the night.
Barnett's away draw to Burton in the fourth qualifying round of the Cup looked a tough one. And everybody from Underhill was pleased to come back with honours even. Barnett won the replay 1-0. A scoreline that really doesn't reflect how much Barnett dominated the game. Wilson. And Cooper's picked that one up. I'm sure it was a shot. Well played, Jeff Cooper. Yeah. Oh, it's a great cross and a nice flick from Frank Murphy. It just passed the post. And the keeper will be headed in by Gary Ball, number one for Barnett. And certainly, the early pressure that Barnett had put on has been rewarded with that one. It's a pain. Nice ball out to ball on the right in some room. A lot of Barnet men up front. Mick Bodley looking for that. Cooper. And <laughs> safely back to Goodwin. Mick gets it to Steen. Oh, Eddie Steen doing very well. And it looked like a bad tackle. Getting it to Gary Paul. Well saved by Goodwin. And Bodley finds Stacey back to Wilson. To Murphy, lovely turn again by Frank Murphy. And a shot just wide. Next came the one we'd all been waiting for, the visit to Darlington. Newly relegated from Division 4, but to date unbeaten in the conference. A goal down at half-time, Barnett fought back magnificently to win 2-1 and were applauded off the pitch by both sets of supporters at the end of 90 minutes. Good through ball. Darlington on the break. Oh. Yeah, it's one nil for Darlington. Oh. That's a free kick to Barnet. <laughs> David Chip with his first league goal for Barnet. And Barnet getting their just desserts with some good pressure this half. Just over a quarter of an hour left. Riley looking for Gary Ball. Ball fouled. Free kick to Barnet. A magnificent goal from Gary Paul. up an injury there. to try and spend 10 minutes persuading everybody that I'm not over the moon. Out from Eddie Steen. It's a lovely header. What a great challenge. It's Phil Stacey getting in at that crucial second. Corner to Darlington. A superb through ball. 
And a sizeable crowd again urging Darlington on in these last couple of minutes. That's away by Mick Bodley. Gary Ball. Again, doing well. Gary Poole. Easy for Guthrie. Stacey, good interception. And again, Cooper. Great ball to Jip. To Gridlet. Gary Poole, free. Too late. Poole. Store, Darlington one, Barnet two. visit to Underhill was a less attractive fixture. However, in a hard-fought game, Barnett did well and came out 1-0 winners with a goal from Gary Ball. Cooper. <laughs> McDonnell doing well in the Barrow goal. First from Gary Ball and then stopping Jeff Cooper. Corner to Barnett. Payne. That's a superb save from McDonald. That ball looked destined for the bottom left hand corner. Derek Payne. Corner. McDonald doing well in the goal today for Barry. Riley. That's a good turn from George Riley. Shot looked as though it might have been going just past the post, but forced McDonnell into the save, and that's another corner to Barnett. Wilson looking for Steen. And Steen gets the ball. Mistake from Chilton. Looking for Murphy. Great goal by Gary Ball. Good work again on the right from Eddie Steen. And a good cross ball from Murphy. See, was Steen free. It's a good cross. Cooper. Great header and a very good save by McDonald. Murphy. It's a ball. Wilson. And a chance for two. Good save from Guthrie. Chance. And the free kick to Barnett, just in the range that Gary Paul scored the magnificent goal last week from. 
and he's nearly done it again. That's a great save, and the referee's given a goal kick for some unknown reason. One wonders if he's on the same planet. McDonald's a bit of grief, having a great save like that, completely ignored. Stacey concedes the corner, but no, it's a goal kick. Some incredibly strange decisions out here this afternoon. And that's off the bar. Referee's given a corner. I'm not sure whether Guthrie touched or whether it even went off, but the referee seems to have his own set of rules anyway, so let's get on with it. Cooper. That's a spectacular effort, just over the top from Jeff Cooper. And the final score, Barnet 1, Barrow 0. The first round proper of the FA Cup saw Barnet drawn away to Bristol City, a side currently top of the third division. However, Barnet never looked second best and won many friends at Ashton Gate and, for the second consecutive away game, were applauded off by the home supporters.
home fixture against Stafford Rangers wasn't a tough one. However, it needed a late goal from Gary Paul to save Barnet's blushes. Although, had Andy Clark taken a fairly easy chance near the end, the Bees might still have taken the three points. Clark looking for a one-two from Ball. It's Cooper. Just past the post. Jeff Cooper really buzzing after a scintillating performance at Bristol last week. And then that ball just wouldn't come down fast enough for Derek. And that's Clark through. And he showed too much of that to Ryan Price. Yeah. I really could have gone anywhere, but goes behind for another corner to Barnet. Yeah. And that's one nil to Stafford. And Peter Guthrie unable to take that corner. feel sorry for the man after the press comment this week. Oh, Pain to Clark. Price doing very well yet again in the stack of goal. That's the end of the first half. Barnet nil, Stafford one. Second substitution for Barnett, Frank Murphy for Gary Ball. Murphy to Steen. Clark. One feels that the ball isn't going to go into the net today for Barnett. Gary Paul. <laughs> Lovely touch by Murphy to Ryan. Cooper. And it's the corner. Murphy to Steen. Lovely ball. has had an absolutely superb game. It's a shame for him. <laughs> and a good save from Peter Guthrie. <laughs> it certainly looked as though Guthrie was impeded. It's a goal kick to Barnett. Steen to Clark. And he's put it wide. Out of room on the right. And final score. Barnet won, Stafford Rangers won. Kettering is another ground where Barnet find it very difficult to come by any good fortune. And again, this season is no different. After going a goal up in the first minute, Barnet played some good football, but were unluckily defeated three goals to two. And 
good head. Early cross and it's a goal, Barnett. Number 10. Murphy with a good header there. Good run from midfield, came in, slotted it home. You can see from the away end that Barnett have brought their usual loyal following and have swelled the crowd to some two and a half thousand, I'd say. There's yeah, penalty to Kettering for holding there, number three. The ball being carefully placed. Defender and Kettering have scored. <laughs> Robbie Cook the scorer. Let's see what Barnett's replies. Lovely move from Barnett. Great goal from Riley. That is a super move. Kettering players just stood away. Now there's a break on here. Should have done better than that. Free header from the number nine there. Terrible Barnet defence. What's the referee going to... took a deflection a half-hearted shot there took a deflection good save good shot maybe could have taken a couple of yards further in Defeat at Kettering, Barnet bounced back with a superb display against Farnborough Town. Although Frank Murphy got a hat trick, the hero of the day was Andrew Clark. Braithwaite nearly getting ready to weigh. Read. Timely interception from Bodley at the back corner to Farnborough. And Jim Wigmore perilously close to putting Farnborough ahead there. Jack Payne doing well under pressure. Andy Clark. And he beats his man. It's a great run. And what a superb goal. Frank Murphy. Clark to Cooper. Looking for Frank Murphy. Riley. Stacey.
Mike Riley. Possesses Hicks. Yeah! And Murphy again. Yeah! I think Barry Fry enjoyed that one more than anybody else in the ground today. Yeah. What price, Andy Clark, then? It would be interesting to read the minds of some of those league scouts that must be here watching. Wilson. Murphy. Payne. Riley. Murphy. Great turn. Oh, superb. Oh, what a shame. Off the crossbar from Jeff Cooper. Super football by Barnett up front. Most of it revolving around Frank Murphy. Stacey to Clark. Hicks fouled him again, but still unable to stop him. And it's Murphy. Super save by Julian Gray in goal. Great run by Frank Murphy. So he didn't get his hat trick. It's a bodley. It's Gary Paul. Should break for Andy Clark. Oh. It's through Hicks' legs. It's a call to Savannah. It's half time. After an indifferent start, Barnett plays some excellent football and lead 2 0. Cooper. Gridley. Murphy. That's Jeff Cooper. It's doing well to clear, it's Rogers now. Reed with a half chance, but can't keep his shot down. It's a goal kick. Goodlet gets there first. Murphy to Cooper. Rather to Clark to Cooper. Murphy! And he's missed where surely it would have been easier to score, but it's Riley. And off the post from Derek Payne. There must be a sheet of plastic over that goal. Surely he was kicked. It's Clark. Frank Murphy over the top again. That's Andy Clark. Four, four. He's beaten four men now. Murphy. And the woodwork denying Barnett yet again. It's absolutely unbelievable, Andrew Clark. It doesn't seem no matter how many people are marking him, he's still getting through. He's taken off uh, Derek Payne and Jeff Cooper, both who have played extremely well today. And we're going to have David Chip and Eddie Steen. Clark to Bodley. To Gridley. I'd rather be more befitting at Twickenham. Oh, 
lovely move by Farnborough. Corner. And a break on for Barnett now, four against two. Miss Andy Clark. Unfortunately, that never looked like getting across to Frank Murphy. And Barnett really should be capitalising on a lot of this possession up front. The goal difference could have been so much better after today. It's Steam with the throw for Barnett to Riley. Stacey to Clark. And he's got past two at once. Murphy. And he's done it. It's a hat trick and 3 0 to Barnett. Well done, David Chip. Riley. Bodley to Chip. Steen making a good run and it's Eddie Steen with a chance. And he's done well. Off the post. Great effort, Eddie Steen. A chip. Scintillating football by Barnett. Super goal for Farnborough by Tommy Mason. Good work over on the right by Smith and a good cross. Fielder with a lot of room, but Clark has dispossessed him. Three against two at the front again for Barnett. Murphy for a chance for Jip. Oh, that's a lovely curling shot from Jip. Julian Grady did ever so well to hold that. Ball for Chip. Murphy. Just past the post. And Frank Murphy hasn't had the best of luck with his finishing, but positionally he's had an absolutely superb game. Right. It's Clark. what we all wanted. Number four for Barnett, Andrew Clark. Caps an absolutely brilliant performance. I can't believe he'll be down the hill for much longer though. Simon Reid's goal-scoring record this season, though, I would have thought he would have put that one away. And it's still 4-1 to Barnett. In the last couple of minutes now. Over on the right here, it's Riley. That's another three points. Steen. Looking for Riley. Keeper just gets a hand to it. It's Frank Murphy. <laughs> I think Frank's had a good day today. <laughs> a 
final score, Barnet 4, Farnborough 1. Away from the serious business of trying to get league points, on the 12th of December, Barnet entertained quite a strong Tottenham side, including Paul Walsh, and did well to hold them in a two-all draw. inadequate displays of the season came at Lokes Park, where they were beaten 1-0 by a very average Wickham Wanderers side. For the second round of the Hart Senior Cup, paired Barnet with the favourites Watford. However, with Andrew Clark playing, Watford were no longer favourites and were quite comfortably dispatched five goals to two.
the Christmas local derby saw Barnet run out 2-0 victors over Enfield. Two opportunist efforts from Andrew Clark separated the sides. Well, she wins it, Gary Ball. It's a great save, Andy Pape. Steen gets it across. Murphy on towards Clark. You need more than two defenders to mark Andy Clark. Erskine Smart really didn't have a chance. Razor Bay. And Paul Furlong was offside, it wouldn't have counted. Picked on by Sparrow. Good shot from Sparrow, just past the post. And Sparrow in a lot of room on the left, but the ball's gone right towards Harding. Smart with the cross, Furlong. Great chance for Francis, and a good save from Gary Phillips. <laughs> Ferguson getting it back in. Francis to Sparrow. Takes a deflection. I think it was off Gary Paul. No, from Gary Ball. And away comes Keane for Enfield. With Smart on the right. Come on, stay, shut him down. And Furlong nearly got his head to that. Francis had a chance, but the ball kicked away into touch. Throw to Enfield. Harding. Might have done better with that. And feel very unlucky not to have got on the score sheet yet. Beatty there first. Clark to Murphy. Lovely football, Murphy. Brilliant feints. Back to Andy Clark. Still with Clark. He's looking for Jeff Cooper. And that's a corner to Barnet. Murphy looking in a different class there. Cooper towards BT. Off the line. Andy Clark, number two. after having the best part of this last 20 minutes. You just can't afford to leave Andy Clark unmarked in front of goal. It's Clark off the post. So close to a hat-trick for Andy Clark. Now oh, unable to control the loose ball. It's Clark. To Murphy. Lovely ball to Stacey. Good it over at the back. It's Clark. Stacey. Corner. Good move by Barnet. Right. 
and not enough time to take it. Half time score, Barnick 2, Enfield 0. <laughs> Goodly looking for Murphy. And Murphy might have given that one to Andy Clark. But it's a corner. Runs right the way through to Steen. Pape did well. It's Wilson. That's a lovely ball to Steen. Corners about it. It's got to be a booking, surely. He's, he's already been booked. Get him off. He obviously thinks that it uh, looks a lot worse than it was. Perhaps he's right. Uh, having a little bit of retribution there on Keane. To Andy Clark. And that was all mighty close to being a penalty. Position for Barnet is favourageous for Gary Ball. Interesting dummy from Murphy. Regis. <laughs> Lovely run and cross, just too high. That is staying in a lot of space. Regis. And it deserved to go in. Harding getting his own back on Gridlet. It would appear the referee saw it. Andy Pape getting involved as well. Not. We know why it's a Boxing Day fixture now. I think Harding will be a lucky man to stay on the pitch now. Or is it a booking? Yes, he's gone. And it's not the brightest of actions. Certainly, Enfield have uh, proved a very physical side. Keane should go with him. Keane really should go with him. What a lucky man to stay on the park. and in hard on Gridley, but he still gets the ball through to Murphy. How does well to get the ball away for a corner. To Clark. He's managed to keep it. No, oh, he's lost it. Gridley to Steen. Surely Cooper was offside, but the linesman doesn't think so. Steen. Good save from Pate. And the referee brings a very ill-tempered second half to an end. The final score, Barnet 2, Enfield 0. Christmas was proving to be a good time for Barnet. The second fixture bringing an even more emphatic victory against Sutton United by four goals to one. Another great display of attacking football. Ball. Andrew Clark, 1-0. Yeah. Good header on from Gridley. Oh, I thought it was... 
nice to see Gary Ball back on the score sheet and back in the side. Coco out to Massey. Two-one. Akana Koku gets one back to Sutton. Wilson intercepted by Massey. McKinnon. Steve. Very much needed third goal for Garnett. See that many coming off Eddie Steen's head either. And that's interesting. Steen. And how did that stay out? Eddie Steen feels that he did a World Cup 66 there and it went over the line, but the referee's not interested. To Cooper. Cooper rounds Gates. Gets it across. And that's a brilliant goal. Dave Regis. Great move. A lot of the credit must go to Jeff Cooper for that cross. And that's the final action of this game. Final score, Barnet 4, Sutton United 1. Could so easily have been something more like 8-4. That's in the year for Barnet. The last two seasons had seen Barnet come away from Southbury Road with nothing. This year, after a superbly struck free kick from Jeff Cooper put the bees ahead, the result was never in doubt. Barnet finally running out 3-1 winners. His kick, Gary Ball. That's surely a free kick against Smith. Cooper. 1-0. Brilliant shot by Cooper into the top corner. Andy Pate had no chance. <laughs> One by Francis. Good start from Phillips and the shot from Harding. Gary Phillips having a tremendous game in goal for Barnett. Went to Clark. And Clark has turned smart this time. It's a beautiful ball through to Dave Regis. What a great goal from Barnett. Brilliant move. Good challenge from Paul Wilson. Regis. Good lips on side. And he's beaten Pate. Just the wrong side of the post. Good lip for Regis. <laughs> Must be a penalty. Good to see Dave Regis back on his feet. And it's going to be Frank Murphy with a penalty. A great save from Pate. Murphy. And Murphy makes it 3-0 to Barnett. One wondered how long he was going to take before he shot. Nigel Keane gets one back for Enfield. Ted Hardy, very Ted Hardy said something to the linesman. He finds his way into the book.
lesson from Barry Cryan, sit nice and sedately on his bench. That's the last action of the game, final score, Enfield 1, Barnet 3. Next, Barnet travelled to Kidderminster, his side who had started brightly, but now in recent weeks found themselves out of form. Barnet took full advantage of the situation, winning by an Andrew Clark goal. Andy Clark, about time he scored. And three Barnet men around him. Great turn, Andy Clark. Brilliant football. Super ball to Jeff Cooper. And Gridley puts it wide. What a shame. Cooper. That's a lovely shot from Jeff Cooper. Pull. Gridlet. And ball. The referee says no. The first round of the FA Trophy saw Barnet drawn away at Weymouth. It wasn't Barnet's day and Weymouth deservedly ran out 2-0 winners. The game was noted for some fine finishing and probably Weymouth's best display of the season. from Doherty. And Weymouth have threatened that from the first minute. Smith with a kick. Straight against Gary Ball. Pounder back to Tanner. Smith. Pew! That's a great goal. Well deserved second for Weymouth. Couldn't have been a sweeter shot then from Steve Pew. As holders, Barnet were exempt from the first round of the Bob Lord Trophy and met Kettering Town at home in the second. With the wind at their backs, the Bees raced into a 3-0 lead. Although Kettering made a spirited comeback towards the end, never really deserved it. And Clark gets past Keast. Regis setting up Steen. And that's 1-0 to Barney. Lovely shot from Steen. First to the corner and back in from Regis. On it, with only seven minutes gone, they're 2 0 up. Gary Ball beats Nightingale. And that's a terrific goal from Gary Ball. 3 0 to Barnet. Beach gets it to Graham, and that's a great goal for Kettering. Beach, looking for Genovese. And it's 3-2. Back on league duty, Barnett hammered Merthyr Tidfield 4-0 at Underhill. A superb run from Regis, bringing the third goal. That's a good stop from Gary Phillips. Gary Phillips gets the ball across to Gary Ball. That's 1 0. And 
uh, no doubt the goal will be credited to Gary Ball, but it seemed to me as though it took a deflection off a defender on the way in. Andy Clark. That's 2-0. Gary Phillips doing well. Green had a half chance. And Regis. He looks to have the BC of Holvey. And that's a great goal. Magnificent goal by Regis. That ball should never have been his. I'm sure his brother would have been proud of an effort like that. Good save. Jeff Cooper, 4-0. And the final score, Barnet 4, Merthyr 0. Spare a thought tonight for Gary Phillips, who, by making a couple of very, very good early saves, built the foundations for this win tonight. Its next game involved the long journey north to Northwich. The home side badly needing points to get them away from the relegation zone. Barnet did well and finished well and came away 2-0 winners. Although had Northwich scored from a penalty and taken several other chances they had, it could have been a different story. Riddlet gets the ball to Eddie Steen and a little bit of space on the right. Andy Clark. 1-0. Superb finish by Andy Clark. And the sort of dream start the visitors are looking for today. And Maguire again. And that looks like a penalty. Handball by Gary Paul. Horrible penalty from Maguire. Possibly Gary Paul might say justice has been done. Well, I think it's also fair to say with the pressure Northwich have exerted in the last 10 minutes or so, they did deserve something. That's a good looking cross. Somehow, Barnett managed to keep that one out. Great save from Gary Phillips. Another superb performance from Barnett's keeper. And Dave Regis. It's fallen for Gary Ball. 2-0. Lovely turn by Gary Ball. <laughs> and the persistent good work of Dave Regis led to that one. Performance by Barnett. Not the most inspiring game of the season, but when you're winning 2 0 away from home playing like this, it's a good sign for the championship. Final score Northwich Victoria 0, Barnet 2. Back at Underhill, Barnet made short work of Kettering Town, beating them four goals to one. A great all round performance from Phil Gridlett inspired the Bees to this victory. Richardson for Kettering. That's a lovely shot just past the post. And he gets it through to Cook. And Cook has put it away, put it wide. A, a player of Cook's experience and ability would have buried that. Steen making the run. And Andy Clark through the middle. Phil Goodlett makes it 1-0 to Barnett. Phil Gridley. 
It's a great run again from Gridley. Brilliant. Brilliant goal from Gary Ball. It's a superb run from Phil Gridley. It made it. A better goal than that anywhere up and down the country. At the corner given to Kestri. Somehow it stayed out. But the linesman's given it. And I hear the goal's credited to number five, Russell Lewis. Wilson forward. Clark. That's 3-1 and there's no doubt about that one crossing the line. But he's forward by Gridley. Dave Regis, and it will break for Clark. Andy Clark. And it's a brilliant fall from Andy Clark. Kettering defence absolutely ripped apart. Display from the Barnet. Second half display from Barney earns him a 4-1 and seventh stroke victory in a row. Surprisingly, Fisher Athletic took an early lead at Underhill, but Barnet fought back hard and eventually completely overran the visitors. However, the game was marred by some bad tackling, and Fisher spent more time kicking Andy Clark than they did the ball. consecutive league win, Barnet made the short journey across London to Welling. It was never to be. Welling raced into a 3-0 lead, and although Barnet did make a late comeback, never really looked like getting anything from the game. Although their league position was rock bottom, the side played with plenty of spirit and troubled Barnet throughout the 90 minutes. However, a late goal from Phil Gridley gave Barnet the three points they so badly needed. From Steen. It's a great ball to Regis. It's a terrible challenge from Mark Jones. And the referee's played the advantage. Oh, he hasn't. Steen with the kick. Paul. Good lead. Corner. Wall's about four yards away, I should think. Harding. Good lead. And it's 1 0.
Good header forward from Harding. Unfortunately, we didn't have any film of this game in the Bob Lord Trophy. Barnet eventually bowing out to Yeovil Town, again by the odd goal in five. As ever, Kidderminster Harriers came to Underhill to play open and attacking football. It nearly paid off, but for a great performance from new boy Paul Harding, instrumental in the first goal and scoring the second himself. Shulgar forward. Burton opens the scoring for Kidderminster. <laughs> Regis. One all. Harding. Lovely turn, Paul Harding. It's a magnificent goal from Harding. Brilliant finishing. Cheap at the price. visited Cheltenham Town. Unfortunately, we've no film of this game, but the only creditable performance from a Barnet player was Gary Phillips, who at least gave the score an air of respectability. Next came the long away trip to Runcorn. Apart from the fact that no one in their right mind would want to go to Runcorn anyway, this season the home side had won all but two games at Canal Street. They took the lead in the first half, but Barnet fought back well. Against the runner play, Runcorn went 2-1 ahead, but Barnett fought back magnificently, and Phil Gridlick gained a point with a last-minute equaliser. That's 1-0. Hesitation in the Barnett defence. I think that was Simon Rudge. Opens the scoring for Runcorn. Three ball for Andy Clark. It's a great run from Clark. And that's one all. A magnificent goal from Clark. Far and away the best striker in non-league football. It's a good looking cross. And that's 2-1 to Runcorn. Carter, I think, the scorer. Derek Payne. Phil Griddle it. And that's two all. Probably a little bit too late for Barnet though. Great goal by Phil Griddle it. Barnet's last chance of cup glory was stolen from them at Hartford Town, with the home side winning 2 1 after extra time in the Hart Senior Cup semi final. Next, Barnet visited Telford United, knowing that in order to keep the pressure on Darlington, they must take all three points. This they did, courtesy of two goals from Gary Ball and one from Andrew Clark. And the corner goes to Ball. That's 1-0. Gary Ball. Payne back to Steen. To Ball. Clark. And that's 2-0. What a beautiful shot from Andy Clark. And unbelievably, the Telford supporters who were jeering him have stopped. I am surprised. Steen takes the corner. Harding not too far from that. Stevens heads over his own head. And that's 3-0. Friendly tried to put it in his own net as well. And finally, Ball did it. Granger forward, Stevens. Self had opened their account. The 
championship race was really hotting up, and ITV cameras were at Underhill for the visit of Wickham Wanderers, and they were rewarded by two superb goals from Paul Hardy. Second half, Harding scored again. A goal as good as anything you'll see in the Football League today. Go on, Buzz, get your house on it, my man. <laughs> Next, the game that they build as the championship decider. 5,880 people saw Darlington give a thoroughly professional performance and take the three points back to the northeast. And with four home games in the next couple of weeks, a win today for Darlington would certainly make them hot favourites for the championship. And it's Geddes. 1 0. John Paulfwick. Superb finish. Jeff Cooper caught in possession but wins the throw. It's not a good throw at all. Geddes now. It's a good turn from corner. That's 2 0. Corner makes it 2 for Darlington. given away by Jeff Cooper. Geddes wins the ball. And Jeff Cooper puts it absolutely on a plate. The Lions were flagging for offside. Injury hit Barnet then had to make the journey north to Marston Road, a venue at which they've had little success in recent years. Andrew Clark scored what turned out to be the goal of the season and Barnett gave a particularly good performance but still only ended up with one point. game. Although it was late in coming, a header from Gary Paul gave Barnett the valuable three points that kept them in the championship race. Chip, we're headed back in. Paul! Is it 1-0 to Barnett? from the corner just before half time gave Barnett hopes of a rare victory at Barrow. The home side snatched an equaliser early in the second half and despite a lot of pressure Barnett couldn't get the goal that mattered. At any other time a draw at Barrow would be a creditable performance. Unfortunately at this stage it just wasn't enough. The corner. It's in. 1-0. Higgins, good ball, and that's the equaliser for Barrow. Again at Underhill, Barnett struggled to find their rhythm. A well-placed header from David Gere late in the second half gave Barnett the necessary points. With 
Darlington surprisingly beaten at Kidderminster, Barnet knew that a win at Macclesfield could keep their faint championship chances alive. They managed it, again with a late goal and again from David Jip. for the final game of the season, Barnet made the long trek north to Chorley. Barry Fry's prediction that it would go to the final game had been fulfilled. Barnet knew that if they won and Darlington lost, fourth division football would come to Underhill. Chorley also needed at least a point to be assured of staying in the conference. As it was, Barnet played magnificently and won 4-1. Chorley were relegated. But, as Darlington won 1-0 at Welling, they regained their 4th Division status. Still, at the end of a great season, I'm sure everybody would join me in congratulating Barry Fry and his team. And, if season 90-91 provides half the excitement, I'm sure we'll all be well satisfied. Stain with the corner. Palmed away, Clark! 1-0, Andrew Clark! And the bees are ahead. Insulating finish from what must be the best player outside league football at the moment. Great turn by Harding. And it's a penalty kick. Yeah, whether the offence was handball, but... Uh, the crowd were 100% sure and so is the referee. Just a couple of minutes left before half-time, the perfect opportunity for Barnett to strengthen the position and go 2-0 in front. The onus on Gary Ball. And it's a great penalty by Ball. Magnificent. Free kick taken by Paul Wilson. Clark. 3-0. Brilliant opportunist goal by Clark. It's a great turn from Andy Clark. Ball. 4-0. Great end of season display from Barnett. Clark. Regis, and he's missed. And it's Ross. And Chorley get one back. Final score, Chorley one, Barnet four. Hello. I hope you enjoyed my filming and my brother John's narration and commentary. The final piece of action is from Barnett's last Capital League match against Southend United, which was switched to Underhill. Southend were already established as champions before this match. And you'll see my brother with his young son Craig after this. <laughs> Oh.